Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Allison Galen, Edgar Award winning author of the new novel, The Collective. Allison, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's good to be here. Sure. Well, if someone hasn't yet heard about your new novel, The Collective, how would you describe the novel? Well, I would say it's a novel about uh, rage and revenge um, and the fine line between justice and revenge. Uh, it's about a grieving mother who um, um, cannot get over the death of her daughter five years ago at the hands of a privileged boy who uh, raped her and left her to die uh, in the woods. He uh, went without punishment. He um, has gone on to live a great life, and it's eaten away at her to the fact, to the point of where it's kind of destroyed her life. Uh, all of that changes when, uh, after a public outburst, she is sort of recruited by a group of like-minded mothers on the dark web, and things kind of take off from there. <laughs> Do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to write this novel? Well, I always like to write about the things that scare me the most. And often those things tend to be emotions within me. Um, I think I'm a mother as well. And I often think there have been a lot of stories in the news about uh, mothers who have lost children and uh, to people who have not been punished for it. And I always kind of put myself in the position of those mothers. And I thought of my own angriest, most base impulses. And, and then that's sort of where it came from. We'll be back to my interview with Allison Galen in just a moment. After this brief message from another podcast that I definitely think you'll be interested in. I'm Blair Hurley, and at the Writerly Bites podcast, you'll get my bite-sized tips for making your writing better today, like looking around the edges of a scene and finding the strangest sentence in your story. And I interview authors to get their best tips. Take a listen to Writerly Bites wherever you get your podcasts. Well, what was your initial writing journey that led you to writing and getting your first novel published? Well, I wrote a short story. I, I always wanted to write, uh, but I was a theater major in college, and then I got my uh, journalism degree. And so I was working for magazines, mainly writing entertainment articles. Mm -hmm. And uh, But at the same time, I still had this kind of passion for writing. So I was taking a writing workshop with this uh, a really great writer named Abigail Thomas, who went on to write some wonderful memoirs. But anyway, I was in that class. And I wrote a short story and it was turned out to be sort of a kind of a mystery or murder mystery. And uh, Abigail Tomlin said, you should turn this into a full novel, which was actually something I'd never thought of. So basically, you know, five years later, I came up with a novel which didn't sell. And so I took <laughs> another five years and wrote it. Granted, you know, there were a lot of other things going on in my life at the same time. I wasn't just solidly writing novels for five years. Sure. But, um, but I, I did, um, you know, get it into pretty good shape. I found an agent. And then in 2005, uh, I sold my first book, which was called Hide Your Eyes. And, uh, you know, kind of went on from there. I, I continued to write crime fiction and um, really enjoy it a lot. Uh, I've, I've written 11 books, 12 books. Uh, the Collective is my 12th book. That's great. Well, what was your writing process when you were working on The Collective? Did you outline the novel before you sat down to write it, or do you just kind of follow the narrative? Um, I Kind of a combination of both. What I like to do when I write a book is I kind of know where it's going to end, but I'm not really cl completely clear on the journey that's going to take me there. So as I'm writing it, I kind of outline maybe a few chapters ahead. Um, and write those chapters and then outline another few chapters and write those chapters. So it's kind of a combination. I'm curious, are there ever days when you sit down to write and the words aren't coming? All the time, constantly. And, you know, either they come or they don't. I try not to beat myself up if I have a day where nothing gets accomplished. Um, sometimes maybe I'll end up coming up with just some ideas or uh, you know, some plot ideas or something, or writing a scene that ultimately ends up getting thrown away. But at least it's something that I tried to see if it would work. Um, a lot of times I, I liken the writing process to 
to uh, feeling around uh, in a closed uh, dark room looking for the for the light switch and either you find that <laughs> light switch or you don't <laughs> and and how was the difference when you started writing fiction compared to kind of the entertainment articles that you were writing Oh, it's completely different. Writing the entertainment articles, it's all there for you. Your story's all there. Um, right. You know, they kind of follow a formula in a way. There's a, a limited word count. And, um, you know, and also you're not as obviously not as married to the material. The reason why people want to read these articles is because of the subject uh, that you're covering. They don't care about you so much as a writer, you know, in my case. So, um, so it, it's almost more like doing a math problem or something. I've never had writer's block when writing a, a magazine piece, uh, but as far as writing a novel, it's just, it's, you're creating everything. You're creating all these characters. They all, it all comes from within you. So, uh, it's a lot more difficult, but personally, I, I find it a little more rewarding. That's great. So are you working on a new novel now? Yes, I am. Um, I'm working on a new novel uh, about, unlike the collective, uh, the woman in my novel is sort of becomes a target of uh, some an unseen group of people who seem to be uh, gaslighting her, tying her to um, a murder that happened decades earlier, um, a death, actually. Uh, did she have to do with it? Is she being gaslit? She's, you know, as the book goes on, she's really not sure. <laughs> so that's what that's about. That's great. Well, what writing advice would you offer for those who are working on their own stories and novels? Um, I think a writer's best friend is rewriting and revising. So I would agree with everybody who says, be persistent, get that story you want to tell written and get it out there. But if you're getting the same type of constructive criticism from a group of people that you respect, I would consider it a gift and um, use that constructive criticism and go back and rewrite and refine. I know I do that all the time with my books. Uh, I do. I have uh, page, uh, files of cut chapters and sections that are hundreds of pages long. Um, so I think uh, be persistent. Tell the story you want to, but don't be afraid. Be also flexible enough to rewrite. Now is the perfect time to work at Amazon. They are offering hourly jobs with great pay and even include a large sign-on bonus. No matter where you're at in the job market, you can select from a variety of available roles in your area. Join an exciting work environment and be part of a team that brings smiles to customers every day. To find the job that works for you and some extra cash, go to Amazon.com slash apply. That's Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is proud to be an equal opportunity employer. You've dreamed of building a family, but the journey hasn't been easy. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen, a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families every day. On our new podcast, Baby or Bust, we'll be learning from both reproductive experts and people who have faced challenges just like yours. Join us every week for Baby or Bust, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Make sure to follow us so you never miss an episode. That's great. Well, what novels have you read recently that you enjoyed? Oh, I've read a lot of novels that I've enjoyed. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> there's there's uh, Megan Abbott's The Turnout is really wonderful. It's a very dark uh, story of... Um, of family secrets that takes place in the world of a ballet studio. Uh, so it's a really rich um, sort of story. The characters are really wonderful. It's, it's very dark and compelling. And I love Megan's writing. Um, I also uh, really love dream girl by Laura Littman, uh, which is sort of a little bit like uh, the plot in a way uh, where it's kind of focused on, the world of writing. The main character is a is a writer, um, very unreliable narrator. Uh, it's got a little <laughs> bit of misery in it too, but it's a really, really, a, a really um, suspenseful book that I also found really, really funny. That's great. I'm actually really reading um, Laura Lipman's first novel, the the first Tess Monahan novel. Oh, Tess Monahan's such a great character. Yeah. I, I love I love all of Laura Lipman's books. That's great. Well, um, where can people find you online if they'd like to learn more about you and your novels? 
of I'm at alisongalen.com. That's A-L-I-S-O-N-G-A-Y-L-I-N.com. That's great. Well, again, we've been speaking with Allison Galen, Edgar Award-winning author of the new novel, The Collective. The book is on sale now, so go buy a copy. And Allison, thanks for doing this interview. Thank you so much, Jeff. Great. Now, stay tuned for a brief excerpt from the audiobook of The Collective by Allison Galen, narrated by Vivian Lahaney, available from Harper Audio, wherever audiobooks are sold. The ceremony starts in 20 minutes. I'm climbing out of the subway tunnel, a thousand unwanted smells in my hair. I'm not used to being around this many people, the stink of them, the heat, the noise, the noise especially. I just shared a subway car with a group of high school girls, and their laughter still swirls in my ears. I probably should have driven, but it's been hard for me to drive long distances since Emily's death. My thoughts start spinning along with the wheels. Memories of road trips, of carpools and radio sing-alongs and petty arguments. And before I know it, I'm aiming straight for the divider. The venue is just three blocks away. I walk slowly, slower than everyone around me, trying to catch my breath, to still my thoughts, to think of nothing but the sidewalk and the cold night air and where I need to be. From half a block away, I recognize the Brayburn Club. I know it from the photo I found online. It's located in a Gramercy Park brownstone with leaded windows and wide, majestic steps. It's a week past New Year's, but the Brayburn Club is still decorated for the holiday season. A lush wreath filling the front door, icicle lights dripping from the window sills like fresh beads of sweat. I pass a group of young women smoking last-minute cigarettes. Friends of his, maybe? And I think back to the time I caught Emily smoking weed with her friend Fiona. She must have been 14. Always a little old for her years and bored of our small Hudson Valley town. I got so angry with her, grounded her for two months. Her dad thought it excessive. We smoked pot when we were that age, Matt said, missing the point. Yes, we smoked pot when we were 14, but Emily wasn't us. She was better than us. I won't do it again, Mom, I promise. Her voice in my head is as clear and real as the shrieking laughter of the girls on the train. I want to lose myself in it and never come back. It isn't until I'm at the top of the stairs, after I've handed the boy at the door my invitation and I'm in line for the coat check, that Emily's voice quiets. And I remember where I am and why I'm here. Anything else, ma'am? Says the coat check girl. She has a freshly scrubbed look and shiny dark hair, and she's wearing the Brayburn College colors. Crimson jacket, gold blouse. Anything else? She says it like she's prompting me from a script. No, nothing else, thank you. The girl's nose scrunches up. She looks at me funny. And I wonder if she can sense what I've been up to. Who I am. The evening's main event is the first alumni dinner of the year. It will be held in the formal dining room, a four-course meal, capped off by a speech by a noted software developer from the class of 98. But I won't be staying for any of that. They're holding the ceremony first in the club's library, a sprawling room with wall-sized bookshelves and grand arch ceilings painted with exotic birds and flowers. It smells of leather bindings and polished floors, and there's a Christmas tree in the corner, decorated entirely in Brayburn colors. I imagine most people are calmed by this place, a respite from the stench and bellow of the city. I relax my shoulders and try my best to act as though I feel the same. The seats are all filled by the time I'm in the room. A boy in a tuxedo offers me a glass of champagne from a tray. I take it for the sake of having something to hold, and slip in next to a group at the back waiting. There's a man watching me. That used to happen all the time, and I used to find it flattering, but I don't like it now. 
I've lost 28 pounds since Emily's death. I've stopped coloring my hair and wearing makeup, and I had the boltons removed. And so I am literally no longer the woman I once was. There is no reason to watch me. No flattering reason, anyway. The man is around my age, with a thinning buzz cut, his jacket and tie cheap for the room. He smiles, and I turn away from him, the stem of the champagne glass tight between my fingers. Why are you here? He says, and I think, does he recognize me? I'm hoping my thoughts don't show on my face. Excuse me? MeUndies knows relationships aren't perfect. That's why they're celebrating imperfectly perfect matches with their new Valentine's Day collection. Right now, new customers get 25% off matching pairs. Match your bottom half to your better half in fun, limited edition prints. Check out all of MeUndies' sustainably soft undies, socks, bralettes, loungewear, and more, available in sizes extra small to 4XL. Get 25% off your first order of matching pairs, plus free shipping, at MeUndies.com slash VDay25. Those big wireless companies try to lure you in with a new phone just to lock you into a contract. Not Simple Mobile. If you have a great smartphone you love, you can get a powerful nationwide 5G network without the contract. Just text the word BYOP to 611611 to see if your phone's compatible. Simple Mobile. Out with the old, in with the simple. Message and data rates may apply. Visit simplemobile.com slash privacy policy for privacy policy and the terms and conditions at simplemobile.com slash terms and conditions. Compatible 5G capable device and SIM required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. 5G network not available in all areas. 5G upload speeds not yet available.